Purgal. Purgal is an ancient Maya archaeological site in the Department of Isabel in southeastern Guatemala. It is a medium-sized site covering approximately 3 km twelve along the lower Matogo River, with a ceremonial centre about 1 km from the north bank. During the Maya Classic period AD 200-900, Quirigal was situated at the juncture of several important trade routes. The site was occupied by 200, construction on the Acropolis had begun by about 550 and an explosion of grander construction started in the 8th century. All construction had halted by about 850 except for a brief period of reoccupation in the early post-classic C, 900 C, 1200. Quirigal shares its architectural and sculptural styles with the nearby classic period city of Capon, with whose history it is closely entwined. Quirigal's rapid expansion in the 8th century was tied to King Kayak Tilev Chanyopat's military victory over Capon in 738. When the greatest king of Capon, Yuxakaji Nobukayawil or 18 Rabbit, was defeated, he was captured and then sacrificed in the Great Plaza at Quirigal. Before this, Quirigal had been a vassal state of Capon, but it maintained its independence afterwards. The ceremonial architecture at Quirigal is quite modest, but the site's importance lies in its wealth of sculpture, including the tallest stone monumental sculpture ever erected in the New World. Because of its historical importance, the site of Quirigal was inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1981. Name and Location Thamaprite equals 1.4 alt equals map showing the locations of Quirigal and Capon in the extreme east of the region, with Quirigal to the north and Capon to roughly south. The landmass is located in Central America and bordered by the Pacific Ocean to the southwest, the Gulf of Mexico to the northwest and the Atlantic Ocean to the east. The southern Maya area, showing the locations of Quirigal and Capon Thamaprite equals 1.4 alt equals map showing Quirigal's location at the eastern end of the Matogwa drainage and showing a tight cluster of jade sources are provoked to the west. The landmass is bordered by the Pacific Ocean to the southwest. The location of Quirigal and the Matogwa River, with relation to sources of jade. The archaeological site of Quirigal is named after the nearby village of the same name and is located a little over 200 kilometers northeast of Guatemala City. It lies in the municipality of Los Amitz in the department of Isabel and has an elevation of 75 meters above mean sea level. Positioned on the north bank of the lower reaches of the Matogwa River, Quirigal is situated at the point where the valley broadens into a flood plain which has exposed the site to periodic flooding over the centuries. Although the river passed close to the site during the period of the city's occupation, it has since changed course and now flows one kilometre south of the ceremonial centre. Quirigal is 48 kilometres north of Capon and is located 15.7 kilometres northwest of the international border with Honduras. The local bedrock is a hard red sandstone, which the inhabitants used in the construction of monuments and architecture. This local sandstone is very strong and not prone to shearing or fracturing, allowing the sculptors at Quirigal to erect the tallest freestanding stone monuments in the Americas. Quirigal was built directly over the Matogwa Fault and the city suffered damage in ancient times as a result of major earthquakes. Population Although the Quirigal elite were clearly Maya in ethnicity, the site lies on the southern periphery of the Mesoamerican area and the population was at least bi-ethnic with ethnic Maya in a minority. The majority of the population belonged ethically to the less complex intermediate area lying beyond the eastern border of Mesoamerica. The population density of the site has been estimated at 400 to 500 per square kilometre, 1040 to 1300 per square mile in the centre of the city during the late classic with an estimated peak population of 1200 1600. Surveys have revealed an average of 130 structures per square kilometre, 338 per square mile at the site, compared with 1449 structures slash square kilometres, 3767 per square mile in central Capon. The low population density indicates that Quirigal served as a focus for a dispersed rural population. The population levels of the Quirigal Valley increased rapidly after the successful rebellion against Capon in 738, although it was never a heavily populated site. In the 9th century there was a severe decline in population, culminating in the abandonment of the city. Economy 
The Matogwa River flows down from the western Guatemalan highlands, and Quirigal was ideally positioned to control the trade of uncut jade, the majority of which was found in the middle reaches of the Matogwa Valley, as well as controlling the flow of other important commodities up and down the river such as cacao, which was produced as a local cash crop. Although cacao was produced for trade, maize remained the primary local crop due to its central role in the Maya diet. In addition, maize probably formed an important component in the site's tribute payments to its overlords at Capon, a city that was exhausting its own local resources. Although little jade has been recovered from the site, there is evidence for trade in obsidian originating from the Ixtapec source situated near the upper reaches of the Matogwa. In the classic period, the location of the site would have placed Quirigal on a crossroads between the trading route from the highlands to the Caribbean coast and the route from Capon to the major cities of the Pertain Basin. Known rulers, as recorded on hieroglyphic inscriptions at Quirigal, all dates are AD. Maya inscriptions for rulers sometimes include reference to a number, hell number, or count, named after its main glyph that are believed to specify the position of the ruler in the sequence of dynastic succession to the rulership of the site. Thus a hell number of five indicates the ruler was fifth in the line of dynastic succession. Early history. There is evidence that Quirigal was occupied as early as the late Proclassic 400 BCE-D 200. Although no structures have been securely dated to this period, a number of late Proclassic artefacts have been recovered including 63 figurines and a chirp blade. Early classic ceramics from Quirigal are similar to finds at both Capon and Chalchiope in El Salvador, while jade hunchback figurines from the same period resemble those found in central Honduras and in the Guatemalan highlands. These early finds demonstrate the participation of Quirigal in the wider southeastern Mai region from the late Proclassic onwards. The combination of hieroglyphic texts from Tikal, Capon and Quirigal together with architectural styles and chemical tests of the bones of the founder of the Capon dynasty all suggest that Quirigal and Capon were founded by elite colonists from the great city of Tikal as a part of its expansion into the southeastern border area of the Mai region. The recorded history of Quirigal starts in 426 in the early classic C, 200 C, 600, according to hieroglyphic inscriptions at other sites. On 5 September of that year, Kayanish Yaks Kayuk Mo was enthroned as King of Capon. Just three days later, he installed Tok Kasper, the first known king of Kurigal, upon the throne. From this, it is evident that right from the beginning of its recorded history, Kurigal was subservient to its southern neighbour and was founded to bring the lucrative trade route of the Matagua River under the control of Capon and, indirectly, of Dakal. During the next few centuries, about which little is known, the ceremonial architecture at Kurigal was limited to the hills of Krupa and the broad earthen platform on the valley floor. It is recorded that a stella, as yet undiscovered, was erected in 455 by Tujum Yol Kainish, the second king of Kurigal. An early monument records the supervision of a ritual in 480 by the then overlord from Capon, demonstrating Kurigal's continued status as a vassal of the city. A hieroglyphic text dating to 493 mentions two further kings of Quirigal, but interruptions in the text make the reading and decipherment of their names particularly difficult. There are close parallels between the 5th century architecture and monuments of Quirigal and Uxacton in the northern Betain, a site that fell under the domination of Tikal in the late 4th century. The similarities show that Quirigal remained strongly aligned with the Great Tikal Alliance network. Hiatus and Recovery Quirigal suffered a hiatus from the turn of the 6th century that lasted through to the middle of the 7th century. This may be linked to the Tikal hiatus of the Middle Classic caused by Tikal's defeat by Talakmal. There is evidence that Quirigal suffered an attack by unknown enemies in this period, as demonstrated by the apparently deliberate defacement of Stella U and Monument 26, characteristic of damage inflicted by invading warriors. No monuments were erected during this hiatus, which lasted from 495 to 653. In the 6th or early 7th century, a natural disaster caused a devastating flood of the Matagua Valley and buried the surface of the site under a deep layer of silt, completely changing the landscape. Only those buildings that stood above the mud continued in use, including Grupa, saved by its hilltop location. 
The earthen platform on the valley floor also continued in use, at least those parts of it that stood above the silt, and it was one of the site's small complexes that grew to become the new centre of Krigal, as represented by the monuments visible to this day. A revival can be identified by the dedication of the first new monument in a century and a half, raised by the otherwise unknown king, Keyawil in 653. Continued contact with Kapone is evident, as well as longer distance contacts, possibly with Karakol and Belize. At about the same time, major construction work was undertaken in their Acropolis, including the building of the site's first ball court. Apogee. Kuigar traditionally had been subordinate to its southern neighbour, Kapon, and in 724 Yuxakal Chinobu Keyawil, king of Kapon, installed Keyak Telechanyopot upon Kuigar's throne as his vassal. As early as 734, however, Keyak Telechanyopot had shown that he was no longer an obedient subordinate of Kapon when he started to refer to himself as Keolaha, Holy Lord. Instead of using the lesser term Aho, subordinate lord, at the same time he began to use his own Kurigar emblem glyph. These early assertions of independence can only have been made if Kurigar had managed to form an external alliance. Indeed, this local act of rebellion appears to have been part of the larger struggle between the two my superpowers, the great cities of Tikal and Kalakmal. In 736, but only two years later, Kayak Telev Chanyopot received a visit from Wamal Kayawil, the High King of distant Kalakmol, while Kapon was one of Tikal's oldest allies. The timing of this visit by the King of Kalakmol is highly significant, falling between the accession of Kayak Telev Chanyopot to the throne of Quirigar as a vassal of Kapon and the Outraid rebellion that was to follow. This strongly suggests that Kalakmol sponsored Quirigar's rebellion in order to weaken Tikal and to gain access to the rich trade route of the Matoba Valley. It is likely that contact with Kalakmal had been initiated soon after Kayak Tilly Chanyopat acceded to the throne, since Kurigar experienced rapid growth soon after, suggesting that Kurigar already was receiving external support. In 738, the interlinked fortunes of Kurigar and Kapon took a stunning change of direction when Kayak Tilly Chanyopat, reigning lord of Kurigar, captured the powerful but elderly 13th king of Kapon. Yuxaka Jinaba Keyawil, who had installed him on his throne in 725. This coup does not seem to have affected either Kapon or Kurigar physically. There is no evidence that either city was attacked at this time and the victor seems not to have received any detectable tribute. Kurigar seems rather to have gained its independence and the control of important trade routes. An inscription at Kurigar, although difficult to interpret, suggests that the capture took place on 27 April 738, when Krigar seized and burned the wooden images of Kapon's patron deities. All of this seems to imply that Kayak Tello Chanyopot managed to somehow ambush Yixaka Jinobu Kayawil, rather than to have defeated him in our trade battle. In the classic period, the statues of my deities often were carried into battle on palanquins, facilitating their capture in the event of defeat. It has been suggested that the King of Kapon was attempting to attack another site in order to secure captives for sacrifice, and was ambushed by Kayak Tilip Chanyopot and his Quirigar warriors. The captured lord was taken back to Quirigar, and on 3 May 738 he was decapitated in a public ritual. The sacrificial offering of the blood of such a powerful of lord greatly enhanced the standing of Quirigar and its royal family throughout the region and it proclaimed Quirigal as the new capital of the southeastern Maya region. After this, Quirigal engaged in a major monument building program, closely mimicking the sculptural style of Kapon, possibly using captured Kapon sculptors to carry out the work. The population of Quirigal and of other sites in the valley rapidly increased after the events of 738. Although Quirigar was always a small centre and its total population probably never exceeded 2,000. In the late Classic C, 600 C, 900, alliance with Kalakwal frequently was associated with the promise of military support. The fact that Kapon, a much more powerful city than Quirigal, failed to retaliate against its former vassal implies that it feared the military intervention of Kalakmal. Kalakmal itself was far enough away from Kurigar that Kayak Telev Chanyopot was not afraid of falling directly under its power as a full vassal state, even though it is likely that Kalakmal sent warriors to help in the defeat of Kapon. 
The alliance instead seems to have been one of mutual advantage. Calakmul managed to weaken a powerful ally of the Kol while Quirigo gained its independence. In 718, the city of Exkine, as yet undiscovered site, was attacked and burned by Kapon under the leadership of King Yuxak Jinob Keyawil. After the king of Kapon was sacrificed in 738, Exkai seems to have become a loyal vassal of Quirigor and in 762 Kayak Tilichenyok but supervised the accession of Sunmaiza Jaguar to the subservient city's throne. Kayak Tilichenyok, who had so dramatically changed the destiny of his city, died on 27 July 785. Sumovji is his memorial stone and it describes how he was buried 10 days later in the 13 Kark house, a building that has not been identified. The great king was succeeded by Skyzol, a king whose name has not been properly identified. Skyzol became the reigning lord of Quirigor 78 days after the death of Kayak Teluchanyopot, who was thought to have been his father. His reign lasted from 10 to 15 years then was a period of continued activity. In most of the Maya region cities already were suffering terminal decline, engulfed by the classic Maya collapse, but in Quirigor Skyzal dedicated three great Zumorph sculptures and two altars, considered marvels of Maya stoneworking. Skyzal died sometime between 795 and 800. Decline and Collapse Little is known of Jade Sky, who succeeded Skyzal and was the last recorded ruler of Quirigor. The city's power already was waning, as evidenced by the two stunted steli erected during his reign, which indicate that the kingdom no longer had access to the kind of resources needed to produce monuments of a similar quality to those of his predecessors. Shadesky did build two of the largest structures in the Acropolis, however. Pugar apparently retained its independence from Capon and continued to flourish until the beginning of the 9th century. Relations between the two cities had improved somewhat by 810, when King Yak's passage Chen Yopot of Kapon visited Krugor in order to carry out a Kayat and ending ritual. However, 810 was also the year when the last hieroglyphic texts were raised at Krugor, although a reduced level of construction continued in the city centre. After this, Krugor falls into silence, engulfed by the greater phenomenon of the classic Maya collapse, it had lost its reason for existence when trade no longer flowed along the Matogwa. Within a few years, Kurigal was all but deserted and sites throughout the Matogwa Valley suffered severe decline or abandonment. Post-Classic In the early post-Classic period c. 900 c. 1200, Kurigal was occupied by peoples closely linked to the Caribbean coastal areas of the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize perhaps due to Chantal Maya control of a trade network that included the Yucatan coast and the Matsogo Valley. During their brief reoccupation of the site, they made substantial additions to the Acropolis complex. Finds associated with their occupation include a reclining shack wall sculpture and ceramics from the east coast of Yucatan, artefacts that demonstrate a close link with the distant city of Chichen Itza. Some copper bells and ornaments were recovered from Krugar. They are among the earliest finds of metal artefacts in the Maya area. They have been dated to either the Terminal Classic C, 800 C, 950 or the early Post-Classic. Modern History The first European visitor to publish an account of Quirigal was English architect and artist Frederick Catherwood, who reached the ruins in 1840. The previous landowner, by the surname of Paez, had related the existence of the ruins to his sons and to Carlos Maney a Jamaican Englishman resident in Guatemala. The elder Pais had recently died and passed the land to his sons and, since neither Maney nor Pais' sons had visited the land containing the ruins, they invited John Lloyd Stevens and Catherwood to join them on their first trip to the site. Stevens had other duties to attend to, but Catherwood was able to accompany the Pais' brothers to Kruger. Due to adverse conditions he was only able to stay a short time at the ruins, but made drawings of two of the stelae, which were published with a short account of Catherwood's visit in John Lord Stevens's book Incidents of Travel in Central America, Chapers, and Yucatan in 1841. Quirigal was the first site that Stevens and Catherwood could claim to have discovered themselves. A longer account of the ruins was made in 1854 by Carl Scherzer. Explorer and archaeologist Alfred Maudsley visited Quirigal for three days in 1881, they were the first pre-Columbian ruins that he saw and they were sufficiently impressive to inspire him to take up a permanent interest in Central American archaeology. 
He was able to return on three further occasions, the last being in 1894, and he made the first efforts to clear the monuments before recording them. He carried out a very thorough examination and made a photographic record of all visible monuments, carried out some minor excavations, made paper and plaster moulds of the hieroglyphic inscriptions and surveyed the principal sculptures. These moulds were then shipped to the Victoria and Albert Museum, with casts being transferred to the British Museum. In 1910, the United Fruit Company bought Query and all the land for a great distance around the site for banana production. They set aside 75 acre round the same O'Neill Centre as an archaeological park, leaving an island of jungle among the plantations. More archaeological work was carried out from 1910 to 1914 by Edgar Lee Hewitt and Sylvanus Morley for the School of American Archaeology in Santa Fe. Duplicates of the stele of Query got made from Hewitt's plaster casts of the originals were exhibited at the Panama California Exposition 1915 area included within the archaeological park of Query Gar has been developed for tourism with the construction of a car park, site museum and sanitation facilities and is open to the public on a daily basis. Architecture After Query Gar's pivotal victory over Capone in 738, Kayak Telu Chanyopov rebuilt the main group in the image of Kapon itself. Thus the Acropolis Palace and Bolkot Alai at the southern end of the Great Plaza. The ceremonial centre is laid out around three plazas, the northernmost is the Great Plaza. This plaza measures 325 metres from north to south and is the largest plaza in the whole Mai region. At the southern end of the Great Plaza is a Bolkot Plaza, surrounded on three sides by structures associated with the Acropolis. The Acropolis Plaza is a fully enclosed plaza within the Acropolis itself. The area to the west of the Ball Court Plaza was probably the Riverside Docking Area and there is evidence that the southern part of the Great Plaza was a marketplace. A number of ceramic lined wells have been excavated close to the site core. These were all built in the 8th century and although some continued in use into the 9th century, none are known to have been built that late. One ominous. One is an enormous puff from forming the northern part of the Great Plaza. It measures 100 by and rises 0.5 metres above the level of the southern part of the plaza. It forms the northern portion of the Great Plaza, being built by Kayak Tilu Chanyopat when he extended the plaza northward. The platform was built from river cobbles and was paved with stone slabs. The platform 1 Aminus 1 supported the Stelia C, D, East and Fahrenheit and Zimov B. The platform was built in two phases over about 20 years. One Aminus III is a large mound marking the northern edge of the Great Plaza. It originally measured 82.5 by and was 7 metres high. A 63 metres wide stairway climbed the southern face of the structure from the plaza. The structure was later extended to the north but this second phase of construction was never finished. The Acropolis is the largest architectural complex at Quirigal. It lies at the southern limit of the ceremonial centre of the city. It is a complex construction with new buildings and features being added over time. Construction of the Acropolis began in 550 and continued through to 810 when the site was abandoned. The Acropolis was a palace complex used primarily as an elite residence and for administrative purposes. The Acropolis complex includes structures 1B-1, 1B-2, 1B-3, 1B-4, 1B-5 and 1B-6. Excavations of the Acropolis encounter the fallen remains of Corbel arches, but none are still standing. 1B-1 sub is also known as the Kainish Aha Wall. It was a freestanding wall over 23 metres long and 1.5 metres thick. It stood on top of the western platform of the Acropolis. The western side of the wall overlooked the river and bore five alternating mosaic masks representing solar deities and serpents with human arms. These masks were supported by a frieze consisting of two concentric ovals flanked by serpent heads. The wall was completed around 750 during the reign of Kayak Telu Chenyopot. 1B Sub 4 Excavations at the Acropolis discovered a completely buried ball court under the structures on the western side of the Acropolis Plaza, a rare example of a ball court having been built over by subsequent construction, in this case by Kayak Telu Chenyopot. This was the first ball court at the site and dates to the middle of the 7th century. It was built with blocks of rhyolite. This ball court is a close copy of the ball court at Capon, being built in the same style, to the same dimensions, 
and with the same orientation. The ball court was buried when Kayak Telu Chanyopa built the massive western platform to restrict access to the Acropolis. 1B minus 1 is a structure which forms the southern limit of the Acropolis Plaza. A broad stairway leads down to the plaza from the northern side of the building. The lower walls of the structure are still standing and it has three entrances, each of which opens onto a small chamber. Each of the three chambers has a hieroglyphic step on the back wall leading to another small chamber. Originally, the building had an external band of hieroglyphs. Both the exterior and internal glyphs bear the last known date recorded at Quirigal, falling in June 810. This building was built during the reign of Jade Sky. 1B-2 also lies south of the Acropolis Plaza in the southwest corner. It is smaller than structure 1B-1, which it adjoins, and its lower walls also are still standing. It was a small residential building that was elaborately decorated with sculptured stonework. This structure was probably the residence of Kayak Telu Chan Yopot. 1B-3 and 1B-4 are structures on the west side of the Acropolis Plaza. Only the lower walls remain. Between these two structures is an older freestanding wall. This wall has a westward facing mosaic frieze that bears damaged and now headless depictions of Kinshahao, the sun god. 1B-5 lies to the north of the Acropolis Plaza at the southeastern corner of the Ball Cork Plaza. This structure was accessed via a broad stairway from the Acropolis Plaza to the south, which rises to a single entrance opening onto seven interconnected chambers. This is the largest building at Quirigal and its walls are still standing. It was built during the reign of Jade Sky. 1B-6 La is to the east of the Acropolis Plaza and contained an ancestral shrine, reflecting a long-established tradition first seen at Tikol. Located under the building was a tomb lined with slabs of schist, which contained an elite burial. The remains probably belonged to a male, the teeth were inlaid with jade, and a bead of the same material had been placed in the mouth. Associated ceramic offerings date this tomb to the early classic. 1B-7 is a ball court, built by Kayak Telu Chanyopot to replace the ball court buried under his expansion of the Acropolis. The ball court lies in the ball court plaza, to which it gives its name, to the northwest of the Acropolis. The ball court has an east-west orientation that is unusual in the Maya region, where ball courts traditionally are aligned north-south. 3C-1 is a broad earthen platform on the valley floor. It dates to the middle of the Classic period and is one of the early constructions at the site, parts of it continuing in use after a catastrophic flood. 3C-7 is a group dating to the early Classic. It is on the floodplain some distance to the north of the Acropolis. 3C-8 is another early classic group located to the north of the Acropolis. Locus 11 and Locus 57 may have been watchpus. They were situated at the points where the Kurigal and the Djibuka rivers entered the Matalga Valley and may have been used to control passing traffic on these routes. Locus 57 was situated on one of the most probable routes to Kapon and may have been a watchpus to look out for enemy warriors after the defeat of Kapon by Kayak Telu Chanyopot. Locus 122 and Locus 123 are groups located on the floodplain south of the river. Locus 122, although unexcavated, is a compound consisting of a pyramidal mound and any SW oriented plaza, similar to some preclassic complexes in the highlands, for which reason it is presumed to date from the period. Krupsa B in Celsius lie at a distance of 1 minus 3 miles from the site core. Grupa is a hilltop complex roughly dating to the early classic period. A stella found in this group dates to 493. Group B, also known as Group 7 Aminus 1, is to the north of the site core. It is the location of the badly eroded stella S, which was moved here from the Great Plaza in ancient times. Group Celsius has an unsculptured stella. Monuments the monuments at Kruga include unusually large stelae elaborately carved from single blocks of red sandstone, brought from quarries five kilometres away. The characteristics of this hard rock allowed the local sculptors to produce low-relief sculptures enhanced by three-dimensional faces, in contrast with the contemporary two-dimensional sculpture of the Patane region. After the defeat and execution of the King of Capon in 738, the sculptural style of Quirigal closely resembled that of its former overlord. The enormous stele at Quirigal originally would have been visible from the Matogwa River, which once flowed past the west side of the Great Plaza, 
announcing the newfound power of the city to passing traders. The monuments include long panels of glyphic text that are considered among the most complex and beautiful of all Mystone inscriptions. A characteristic of these texts is the use of full-figure glyphs in which the normal ball and dot number glyphs of my script are replaced with exquisitely carved representations of the deities. However, by the latter part of the 8th century, Quirigar had developed an original style with the production of boulders elaborately sculpted into the forms of composite mythological animals bearing elements of toads, jaguars, crocodiles and birds of prey. These sculptures are referred to as Yumorts and were completed by two later kings after the death of Kayak Tiliwt Shanyapat in 785. There also are various altars and sculptures used as decoration in the facades of buildings. Most Quirigar monuments have a grand formal monumentality that is rather stiff compared to the naturalistic grace of the art of some other Maya sites. Traces of red pigment have been found on some of the monuments, and most of the monuments were likely to have been painted red, the colour of birth, sacrifice and renewal. Stella was erected in 775 by Kayak Tilut Shanyapot. Stella and Stella Celsus form a pair and were both dedicated on 29 December 775. Sumorfbi was dedicated in 780 by Kayak Tilut Shanyapot. It is a multi-ton boulder sculptured into a half-crocodile, half-mountain beast. The hieroglyphic text on this monument consists entirely of full figure glyph. Traces of red pigment have been found on the Zumorf, which is 4 metres longitude. A dedication cache was found buried in a pit under Zumorf B. It included seven flint blades between 14 and in length. Stella Celsus was erected in 775 by Kayak Teluchanyapot. The hieroglyphic text contains references to 455 and to Jimyol Kayanish, an early king. The stella also bears a reference to the day 13.0.0.0 Ahoy Kumku 13 August 3114 BC. This date is recorded throughout the entire Maya area as the beginning of the current creation when the deities were placed in order. Stella C forms a pair with stella and was dedicated on the same date. Stella D dates to 766, during the reign of Kayak Chanyapot. It is distinguished by the relatively rare, extravagant, full-figure anthropomorphic versions of Maya hieroglyphics on the upper parts of its sides, which are particularly well preserved. Stella D is roughly 6 metres in height. Stella E stands in the northern half of the Great Plaza. This stella was dedicated on 24 January 771 by Kayak Chanyapot. Its total shaft measures 10.6 metres in height, including the buried portion holding it in place, which measures just under 3 metres. This enormous monolith is the largest stone ever quarried by the ancient Maya and weighs approximately 65 tonnes. It may even be the largest freestanding monolith in the New World. In 1917, this stella, already tilting away from vertical, finally fell over completely after heavy rains, although it remained unbroken. In 1934, an attempt was made to raise the stella using a winch and steel cables, during which the cables snapped and the monolith fell and was broken into two pieces, which have since been joined back together using concrete. This stella bears portraits of Kayak Tilu Chan Yopos on its front and back. Stella Fahrenheit is an enormous 7.3 metres high monolith carved from sandstone. It bears representations of Kayak Tilu Chanyapot on its north and south sides and hieroglyphic inscriptions on its east and west sides. It dates to 761 and when it was raised it was the tallest monument ever erected by the Maya. It was only surpassed when Stella E was erected ten years later. Sumovji is the memorial monument to Kayak Tilu Chanyapot dedicated during the reign of Skyzol. It shows the face of the dead king emerging from the moor of an enormous jaguar. The text of this monument describes the death and burial of Kurikar's greatest king. Stella H dates to 751, during the reign of Kayak Tilid Shanyapot. Its glyphs are arranged in a rare map pattern, copied from Kapon. The stella is executed in the wraparound style. A flint blade was found buried under the stella, but buried is an offering when the stella was dedicated. The hieroglyphic inscriptions on stella H are badly damaged. Stella J was erected by Kayak Tilu Chanyapot in 756 and is carved in the wraparound style. 
It stands five metres high and is located in the southern part of the Great Plaza. The dedicatory cache consisted of a high-shaped clay box with unknown contents. Altar L is fairly crudely worked and dates to 653. Text bears the name of King Kayawil Yopot and also mentions Smoky Mix, the 12th King of Kapon. The altar is a rhyolite disc 1 metres in diameter and 0.25 metres thick. The sculptural style of this altar is unique and shows affinities with the distant site of Karakolin Belize. Altar M, this modest monument, is the earliest known monument dedicated by Kea Taleb Chan Yopot. The importance of this monument lies in its text, in which this preeminent king of Kurigo claimed the title of Kayuhalajo, Holy Lord, and began his bid for independence from Kapon. This rhyolite sculpture was dedicated on 15 September 734 and has the form of a monstrous head, possibly that of a crocodilian. Altar North is another small rhyolite sculpture stylistically similar to Altar N. This sculpture has the form of a turtle shell with a skeletal head with a mirror on its forehead emerging sideways from one end and an elderly figure from the other. This is a representation of the bias of Alec deity Powhatan God N, a prominent underworld deity. Sumorfo is a crocodile mountain hybrid monster, dedicated in 790 by King Skyzel. It is accompanied by an altar depicting a lightning god. It is located in the Ballcourt Plaza, just south of the Ballcourt itself. Sumorf P, which Explorer Maltzley nicknamed the Great Turtle, was dedicated in 795 by Skyzel and is a masterpiece of Mesoamerican art. It weighs around 20 tons. On one side it depicts a larger than life portrait of Skyzel himself seated cross-legged in the open jaws of an enormous crocodile mountain hybrid monster. The design of the Seamorph is incredibly intricate and the whole monument is covered with skillfully executed sculpture. It is located in the Ballcourt Plaza, just south of the Ballcourt. Seamorph P is accompanied by an also depicting an unidentified deity leaping from a split in the earth. A hieroglyphic text on the Zimov describes the finding of Kurigar under the supervision of the King of Kapan. Traces of red pigments have been found on this monument, suggesting that it was originally painted red. Alta Q and Alta R are two small rhyolite discs that probably served as Balkort markers for the earliest Balkort, the buried structure 1B sub 4. Together with our third stone, they would have marked the central axis of the Balkort. They both bear seated cross-legged figures carved in shallow relief. Stella South is the earliest surviving monument of Kayak Talu It dates to 746. It was originally located in the northern half of the Great Plaza, but was moved to an outlying group in ancient times. It is heavily eroded. Some of the damage may have been inflicted by the process of moving it. It was fashioned from sandstone and bears the figure of Kayak Telev Chan Yopot on the front, the other three sides being covered by hieroglyphic texts. Unfortunately, due to the heavy erosion, most of the text is illegible. Stella S is 2.8 metres high, not including the pot of the stella buried in the ground, and the dimensions of the base are 1.6 metres by 1.2 m, making it the earliest of the huge stelae that were to characterise Krugal although it is significantly smaller than those that were to follow. Stella T was dedicated in 692 by an unknown ruler. It is a badly eroded chist sculpture bearing mostly unreadable glyphs of the company, a poorly preserved figure. The Stella is conservative in style, being similar to the much older Stella U. Stella U comes from group and bears a heavily eroded portrait of a king in wraparound style extending over three sides of the Stella. This style originated in Tikol and indicates contact with the central Petain region. This stella has an identifiable date, corresponding to 18 April 480, and a reference to a ritual taking place that was supervised by the King of Capon. This stella is carved from schist and is broken in two pieces, being snapped off at the knees apparently deliberately during an attack by unknown enemies. It was originally 2.7 metres in height. Monument 25 is a plain round column carved from schist. It is about 2.5 metres long and 0.6 metres in diameter. It was found in Locus 11. Monument 26 is a stella in wraparound style found close to structure 3C-1. A date corresponding to 493 is contained in the hieroglyphic text on its back. This text mentions the third and fourth rulers of Query Garb, but their names are currently unreadable. It is carved from schist and was originally 2 metres high, but the stella was broken in ancient times 
apparently deliberately. It was broken off at the knees and the left eye of the ruler's portrait was scratched away, damage characteristic of that inflicted by invading warriors. Only two pieces have been recovered, an upper section measuring 1 meters and a lower section measuring 0.6 meters. Monument 29 and Monument 30 are heavily eroded columnar sculptures fashioned from schist, each measuring a little over in length. They were found together in a modern drainage ditch to the north and northwest of the ceremonial centre of Kurigal. They apparently were sculptures of anthropomorphs or monkeys standing on pedestals with their hands clasped on their chests. It is thought on Salistic grounds that these two monuments date to the late Proclassic.